I usually hate winter, but lately I've been trying to lean into it. On one hand, everything looks a bit more dead and the trees are bare. It's usually rainy and constantly grey. But on days like this one, when the sun is out and the air is crisp and there's this light dusting of frost over everything, loving winter doesn't seem too impossible. This morning is just crazy beautiful. It was too beautiful not to come out and brave the cold. Got my cup of tea and I'm just gonna take it all in. So last time I filmed myself trying to throw with water clay that I hadn't filtered or processed yet. I think something really hard in it that's going to cause some big issues. It's really stressing me out. I'm going to keep trying. And it was a big fail, like big fail. So I thought it'd be fun to show you the process of how I usually forage for water clay, filter it and basically just get it easier to work with. So I add the dried out lumps of clay to the water in a process called slaking. It might seem weird that I'm drying out the clay just to wet it again, but using dry clay helps it slake down a lot quicker. There's a couple of ways you could do it. I just choose to use the dry clay method. Then I leave it to sit in a bucket of water for about a day. If you listen closely, I think it sounds like a rainforest. After the clay sits in the water for a while, it starts to break down and it looks like this. Next, I transfer it from the bucket to this cloth using this fine mesh sieve. So I'm filtering it through this fine mesh sieve because I want to get rid of the debris and chunks of rock and basically things that aren't pure clay. This process is long and slow and maybe you're wondering why I'd put myself through this. Every time I start doing this, I have the same thought, but in the end, I kind of enjoy it and I feel like it's worth it. If you're a potter, you might be wondering why I'm not using a plaster bat. That would probably be a lot more efficient and honestly, I've just been procrastinating making one. But for now, using a wooden bat and a cloth works fine for me. I repeat this about a hundred times until I'm left with this sludgy heap of clay that's basically slip. Next, I spill a jug of water all over the floor because I love the drama. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh my word. Then I poke a bunch of holes in the clay just to help it dry out quicker and I leave it for about a day or so. The clay has been drying for a few days now and I know it's ready because it's now just peeling away from the cloth. The next step is wedging the clay and ensuring my hair is not in the way. Then it's time to throw. And I have to admit at this point, I was feeling quite nervous just because of how badly it went the first time. It's safe to say this has gone a lot better than the first attempt and it was so worth processing it. After trimming it and giving it the kindred stamp, I decided to carve the pot. I am feeling really happy about this. I think it was definitely worth processing and so far so good, but it hasn't actually been fired in the kiln yet. And I'm gonna hold off on that for a little bit um, because I wanna test out the clay to see what its firing range is. So first I'll probably fire this 
little pinch pot that I made from the same clay just to make sure that it doesn't like completely melt in the kiln and that it actually works. If it does, then I'll fire this one. So wish me luck. Um, I hope it works out because I really want to make more stuff with this clay. Last year when I was foraging for wild clay, I dried it out in a linen pillowcase, which is another way you could do it. I had a lot of fun making this and carving the mountainscape and then I decided to pit fire the pot at home. I added a ton of fuel to it and let it burn overnight. The result was a slightly charred but really beautiful plant pot. So there you go, that's how I process wild clay. I love doing this and I've been thinking a lot lately about how it's fun to watch someone do something they love. I love watching Dan create music. He's made the music for this video and every video. I find it really inspiring watching him get lost in the process and finessing each intricate detail of a song. So, thank you, Dan. <laughs> I, that was amazing. Wow. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One thing I have loved about moving to a little cottage in the countryside is our daily ritual of going out for a sunset walk. Hey, friend. Hey, Hey. This one is so friendly. Hi, are you coming to say hi? Hello. Hi. Oh, hi. I don't have any snacks. <laughs> <laughs>